What's up guys? So uh, today I want to do an update on these Harbor Freight knives. All right, so if you haven't seen my first video, I'll put a link in the description box for it so you can reference uh, some of the specs and stuff, uh, as well as the prices, because I don't remember the prices offhand. Uh, I believe they were all under 10 bucks, but they did vary just a little bit there. Um, so I use these on and off, and I have to say I, uh, I like uh, two of them <laughs> of the three, especially for the price, but there's one complete dud here that I would not recommend. And I'm gonna see if you guys could guess before I tell you. Yeah, it's that one. That one is a complete dud. I definitely wouldn't recommend this. Um, first off, it has a flipper, right? It has a uh, dual thumb suds on here. You'll never get it to flip out unless it's loose. I uh, play with this quite a bit. I mean, maybe you guys get lucky. Um, the problem with a lot of these, um, you know, very affordable or, or real cheap knives is inconsistency. So maybe you get one right off the shelf and it's nice and smooth and it, you know, flicks right out and there's no problem. My issue is that with this one and like a lot of other, you know, cheaper knives, once you play around with like the pivot to get it so it could flick out fine, you get blade play. That's just what happens. It's an inherent problem and it really just has to do with the, the tolerances of the knife. So if you don't mind a little bit of wiggle here and there, I mean, you don't, feel too much blade play uh, when you're cutting stuff. I mean, if you're cutting a bunch, you know, or if you're cutting to something that's really thick, you'll, you'll feel that. You'll feel the, the blade wiggle. Of course, I hate that. No one likes blade play. It's just some people tolerate it depending on the situation. Um, but generally speaking, you don't, you don't want blade play. When the lock locks up, you don't want it to move, okay? Uh, blade play can actually create a dangerous situation. This is a frame lock. Uh, it's a thin frame, but, you know, liner locks, uh, a variety of different locks out there. If you have blade play, you're more likely to have that lock fail because things are wiggling around. It could slide over. You know, again, it has to do with, you know, the tolerances and how the face of the lock is, but it's just no good. It's no good. That's why people talk about it all the time. It's why, you know, people make knife videos or you talk about knives, you'll hear that mentioned a lot, blade play. You know, people focus on all kinds of things. Some is may, way more important than others. Like blade centering is something that a lot of people focus on. And yeah, a blade should definitely be centered, but blade play is important. Blade centering, not so much. But anyway, uh, well, I mean, if you're paying four or $500 for a knife, blade centering should probably be a concern for, for some of you. But anyway, this knife, uh, I just wasn't very happy with. It's unfortunate because it's, it's actually very ergonomic. It's comfortable. All right, you see a finger twirl here, very slight curve. Then we have a second curve and even a third slight curve. All right, so your two, you know, middle finger and ring finger do rest in here very nicely, at least for my size hands. I have, you know, just kind of extra large hands, a little bit of shorter fingers, a little bit chunkier, you know, hand. Obviously, long, lanky fingers, it could be different if your hands are smaller or even bigger than mine. It could be very different as far as ergonomics. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's comfortable. All my fingers fit in here very nicely. The shelf for the pinky on this knife is actually, it, it's plenty, so I get a full you know, full grip on here. I have nothing hanging off. It's actually really nice. Uh, also, even though this is metal, and you would think it'd be uncomfortable, and I've had plenty of knives, which is kind of strange. I think it has to do with the angle of how the edge really is. Some are, are thinner than others, but I've had knives that have metal liners that look just like this, and then handle scales that don't go to the end. I want to say some of the Civivis, like the Beg Letter, some of them are okay, some of them, are, you know, poke out. That's just one example off the top of my head, but... Um, Oh, no, I'm sorry, not Civi, the uh, Kaiser, the Kaiser uh, big letter. At least one or two of the models that I've had off the top of my head. But anyway, um, but you know what I'm saying, where like it's a pet peeve of mine where the, the scale is short and the liners stick up because then you only feel that thin liner. This uh, looks like it would feel uncomfortable like that, but it's not. I don't have a problem with the grip at all. Also, I don't have a problem with the look of the knife. I think it's a good looking knife. And I think that a lot of people would like this, you know, generic, you know, style blade. It's not anything... It's not like a crazy worn cliff or a tanto. It's not like off-putting. I don't know who would look at this and be like, oh, it's an ugly blade shape. It's not. It's very generic, very simple. Also, the advantage is obviously being all metal. Now, some people would like the all metal because of the, you know, strength. And I have to use air quotes here because people who have knives with micarta scales or carbon fiber scales or, you know, GRN or even some of the cheaper plastics. I mean, they're modern day plastics. They just don't break. You don't hear it very often. It's extremely rare, if you've ever even heard it before, where someone's knife handle broke. You know, it just doesn't really happen. So the argument of, well, you know, metal is better than plastic, 
it, it's a moot point to me. Another thing about metal too, and I've talked about this a lot in the past, is when it's super hot out, if you, you know, are in the middle of summer, and it's 98 degrees, and you have this like, you know, sitting on uh, a bench or something outside, or you just used it, maybe you're doing a, some kind of project outside, you, you rest your knife down for a second, it's not clipped in your pocket, whatever the reason, and the sun's beating on it, it gets very hot. And vice versa, in the winter time, when it's very, very cold, cold conditions, it gets very cold, it retains that cold. And I can tell you right now, it's winter time. Luckily, we've been having some warmer days lately, but in the beginning of the winter, uh, it's been extremely bitter cold, all right? Negative temperatures on some days. Some days it's, you know, floating around single digits. And uh, going out and testing this, you know, EDCing it and carrying it occasionally, there was at least one or two times I, I remember vividly where I had this in my pocket. I took it out, I did not have any gloves. In the winter time, I generally wear gloves when I'm, I'm actually snow shoveling or snow plowing or something like that, or if I know I'm gonna be outside. But like if I'm going to the store or something, I don't wear gloves in the winter. I just have my bare hands. I keep my pocket to keep them warm. Um, and I took the knife out just to play around with it. I didn't actually have to cut anything, but because I know it's metal, I wanted to test it out. And just from getting out of my car and going into a store, like walking, whatever it was, uh, you know, 800 feet, 1,000 feet or whatever, uh, before I got in the store, I reached down in my, my pocket, I take, took the knife out, and the knife was cold. It was physically cold in my hand. It's not that comfortable. So it's just another factor for all metal knives. But even if I didn't care about the all metal, um, the big thing with this is it's hard to open. Can't really flick it open. Even before, I don't know if you noticed when I was playing around with this, it's just a little bit difficult to get that open because there's so much friction here. I did oil it on both sides. Um, again, played around with the pivot, but I, I can't do blade play. <laughs> so I'd rather have a, a tight knife with no play than to be able to flick it out and have it wobbling around. That's stupid to me. Um, but yeah, even if it flung out and everything else was great, let's say this is a, a good one and not like a lemon or anything. This is in a three CR 13 steel and it does not hold an edge. Okay. You can, you know, break a window and take a shard of glass, <laughs> wrap it with a, you know, a, a rag or something. So you don't cut yourself and that will probably stay sharper or longer to cut stuff. Now, something else I want to mention too, which is important is that like, you know, it depends on what you're doing with your knives. There's so many people with so many different lifestyles. And I'd say like one of the most common things that people do with their knives is open packages. And it's same for me. I open a lot of packages, but someone can have this knife for months and months and months and think like, yeah, this is a great knife who may not have as much experience with different types of knives or maybe higher quality knives. And when you're just cutting tape, you know, like you have two pieces of cardboard and there's a tape, you know, because you're getting an Amazon box or something, you're cutting the tape line. That's not really cutting, like cutting, cutting. You know what I'm saying? So like if you, if you have a knife, and this goes across the board with any knife. If you have a knife and you're like, wow, I love this knife. Um, and a lot of your cutting is just that, just cutting the tape line open, or maybe, maybe once in a while, cutting a little bit of cardboard on the end of a box or something. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Anything that comes to a thin, any metal object that comes to a thin edge that's sharp will work. You can definitely tear a lot of stuff open. And so many people, like even in the kitchen, there's so many uh, you know, families across America and across the world that have dull kitchen knives. They don't know and they don't really care because for the most part, it cuts. When it finally squishes a tomato in half before cutting it, they'll go out and buy another cheap set of, of kitchen cutlery. And it's fine because it works. Now, as a knife person, if you're watching this and you're a hardcore knife collector and user, that's not acceptable. But for the average person, they don't really know what a, a sharp knife is. So what I'm saying is like, you know, cheaper stuff like this, it could be fine for a lot of people. It could be fine for most people. But obviously, if you're watching this video, you're probably a knife person. And as a knife person, you can understand and appreciate the quality uh, in, in a higher end knife. Better blade steels, better production, better fit and finish you know, uh, better designs, things like that. So the, the 3CR13 just falls too short. You know, I always say like, blade steel doesn't really matter as long as you can sharpen your knife, but you, you really have to sharpen this too often. And I also feel like the type of person who has this knife and is carrying and using this knife probably doesn't sharpen their knives. They don't know how to sharpen their knives. If you're gonna buy this knife and you're gonna use it until it's dull and throw it away, and you don't use a knife all that often, yeah, maybe that's worth like the six or eight bucks that it costs. Then you just throw it out. You're gonna buy 10 of them, 15 of them, whatever, keep them in your garage. And every time your knife goes dull, throw it out. I guess that's fine. You know, that's acceptable for one person's lifestyle. But for me and for most of you watching, this is a no-go, all right? It's just, it just doesn't hold an edge. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how cool it looks or the blade shape or how it locks up. None of that matters if it can't cut stuff. That's why we have knives. It's literally, its only job is to cut something. 
And when you find yourself struggling to cut, it creates a dangerous situation. You guys know that. A sharper knife is, the safer it is because you're probably going to cut right through whatever you're trying to cut and you're not going to struggle. When you try to cut things and you're, you're struggling because it's dull, that's when you slip off and, you know, cut your hand, cut your leg, cut someone else. Um, that becomes a dangerous situation. So if you can't keep this sharp, I mean, if you have great sharpening skills and you don't want to spend a bunch on knives, it's fine. It'll work. You know, it's not that big of a deal, but when I critique knives, I'm really thinking about the knife connoisseur. I'm thinking about the knife collector and user, and, and all these little things do matter. They all add up. And a knife like this, in even the steel that these two have, an 8CR13 MOV, would be fine. You know, it would be fine. I can deal with the fact that it's harder to open. It's not super smooth. You know, it's a, a sub $10 knife, okay? You can't expect that much out of it, but you do have to expect it to cut. So if you have decent sharpening skills, and you don't have to be like an expert sharpener, but if you have a simple stone or a grinding wheel or something, you know, a belt sander, and you can just do a quick zit zit, or, you know, use an electrical machine, or you don't need a bunch of knowledge on sharpening, but if you could just get a rudimentary edge on this, yeah, it'll open your Amazon box. It'll be fine. But if you're a knife person, you would um, be, you know, highly disappointed in this knife in every respect, except for ergonomics. So I do not recommend that. Even if these were $1 knives, if, if Harbor Freight sold those for $1, I still would be hesitant to recommend them. I really would. That's how much I don't like that knife. All right, so that's my opinion on that. Um, moving on to these. These I do like, okay? Uh, so there's two different, they look like identical knives, and even in the first video I kind of mentioned that I feel like they're, they're similar enough to swap the blades because I prefer the grip texture on this one but i prefer the plain edge blade on this one i also prefer the bearing system this has a, a a bearing system in it so it's a lot smoother pivot bearing um and you notice that and you know side by side i definitely noticed it uh if i did not have this knife at all i wouldn't think this wasn't smooth okay i think like oh yeah it's pretty smooth this is running on some teflon washers if i zoom in here you can probably see them all right the little white washers in there on either side and it's fine. It's not, it's not not smooth, if that makes sense. It feels smooth, you know, until you have something to compare it to. This one is just smoother. There's way less resistance. It has no problem, you know, flipping out on either one of them, all right? But, like, even just right now, and, you know, opening and closing, when I'm closing these, like, and there's no blade play in either one of these, by the way. I have to say, I was very surprised that none of these knives have blade play out of the package. A lot of times when you get, you know, sub-$10 knives, you can almost expect... And nothing's going to line up and it's going to be a horrible mess. But it was decently made in that, that respect. Uh, no blade play at all. And even after using, uh, using these knives, the usage still didn't create any blade play, which is nice. But like I said, um, this is like, you know, if I'm pushing this down, wherever I stop, that's where it, it stays. It's not easy to flip it open or flip it shut like this. Whereas on the bearing system, it's a lot smoother. So I can, you know, flick this thing slowly shut if I need to. You know, not that it, it's not a huge deal, but again, I mean, the point of these videos is to really critique things, like on a micro level. If you hand this to someone and say, hey, is this a smooth knife? They say, wow, that is smooth. But then you hand them this and you say, is this a smooth knife? And they go, oh yeah, no, that's really smooth. That other one, not as smooth, you know, because if you don't have something to compare it to, then you have nothing to compare it to. You know, if I didn't have either one of these knives and this is the only thing I bought, I'd say, hey, you know, it's better than nothing. But because I compare it to these, that's total junk. And these are decent. I would definitely recommend either one of these. But now it comes down to, you know, which one do you pick and why? Obviously, a lot of people prefer plain edge over serrations. I can tell you that I was very happy with this serration pattern and it cuts very well. All right, and that's because they're wider scallops. Now I'll use this one as a pointer. So a lot of times on serrations, you know, you'll have a wider serration then you'll have a couple smaller ones. But on the smaller ones, Sometimes they're too small, and they're so small that they actually snag on things, and it's counterproductive. You're trying to cut through some kind of material, and you end up just binding up on it because there's such a tiny area that's not that sharp. Um, both of these knives are in the uh, the HCR 13 MOV, which again, it's nothing to you know brag about with your knife friends. Of course, they would laugh at you if you were talking about how awesome HCR 13 MOV is. But if you have a real knowledgeable knife friend, they wouldn't laugh. They'd say, yeah. ACR 13 MOV is fantastic for a, an affordable knife because it works. It works fine. I had no problem with these knives. Um, they both eventually got slightly dull. 
Uh, I tried not to strop them because, I mean, for testing purposes, I want to really see how that edge is going to hold. Under normal circumstances, I'd strop them after, you know, every day or at the end of the day when I take them out uh, of my pocket and stuff. But they held out fairly well, I have to say. I'm not, I'm not against 8CR13 MOV. But 3CR13, just pass that up. So anyway, the, uh, the smaller serrations are not that small. So I feel like the wide ones are a little wider than some cheaper knives, and the small ones are still a little bit wider than some other cheap knives. So the serrations were fine on this knife. If I have a knife where I have a combo edge, what I'll generally do is pretend like this doesn't exist. You know, I'm cutting with the, the front portion of my knife most of the time, and if I'm out and about, or if I forget to strop my knife, or forget to sharpen or something, and I find my knife is just a little dull, like I'm going to cut something, and I just find that little bit of like resistance or whatever. And I, especially if I have to cut something fibrous, like a piece of rope or, or a thicker material, denim, anything like that, then I know that the serrations are unused and they are sharp. So if I'm ever feeling a little resistance with the plain edge, that's when I'll come down and that's when the serrations really shine because it's like a reserved sharp area of the knife, okay? As opposed to a plain edge knife, which I use the whole edge as much as possible. But anyway, let me give you a quick, uh, cut test here out of a box next to me. I'll grab a little piece off the side. Actually, we'll start with this one. Come on. See? Just not going to happen. So, again, this one, and by the way, after the testing, after these dulled out, these got stropped. I never sharpened them. Those got stropped. This actually got sharpened twice, and it's still dulled out, and I didn't go nuts with using these things. I mean, I carried them on and off here and there. It's what I always do with knives. I carry them a couple days. Maybe I'll take some notes so I don't forget about something. But I do a lot of my testing around the house. I'll purposely cut paper, cardboard, paracord, whatever, whatever I have around. Plastic uh, jugs, like milk jugs and stuff. But anyway, you know, this one, it's fine, you know. But you could see there's definitely some resistance there. All right, then we have this one. And this is the plain edge portion of it. All right, and that's just dropped. That's the 8CR13 MOV. All right, compare that to the um, serration. The serrations zip through better. And that's because they just get used less. Like I said, I almost reserve those. All right. And then this is literally the same exact blade. It's just this one's in all plain edge. And again, there's a difference between like, like a push cut. You're using one specific area of the blade. Like I'll do a push cut here. So we're using the middle of the blade. And I'm pushing through. That is always going to have more resistance for the most part. I shouldn't say always. There's no definitives. But if you're slicing, if I'm starting from the heel or the bottom of the blade. And I'm slicing all the way to the tip. Yeah, that's going to be easier to cut things. So it's something you might not even recognize when you're using your own knives. You know, you might just automatically do push cuts all the time and not realize that. You know, if you, you know, are cutting something, the next time you cut something, see what you do. Because some people prefer one or the other. But actually, like slicing, it just seems like it's so much easier. There's so much less resistance. But anyway, now they made a, a giant mess here. Um, yeah, this, this is junk. Pass this up. Don't even bother with that. Um, even like gift giving, I wouldn't even do that because that's giving someone uh, a possibly dangerous knife. However, I like these, uh, both of these. And by the way, I didn't mention this before, but I left the clips how they came out of the box. These are both uh, tipped down, as you can see. All right, so these are right side tipped down. That's how I carried them, that's how I used them. It was totally fine. However, if you look at these, both of these models have four way clip positions, so you can have it. Uh, tip up, tip down, left or right hand carry, which is very nice. I very much appreciate that the people at Harbor Freight or whoever makes the, I think Gordon, or both of these brands are Gordon Knives, as well as that one. Uh, that's the Harbor Freight's brand, I guess. But thank you. Thank you for at least doing that to give people options. Because there are lefties out there who always get stiffed on knives, even though they still have to deal with a, a righty style liner lock. And both of these do have liner locks, so I didn't mention that. Um, but at least I can carry it in the left pocket and, you know, everyone has the option of carrying a tip up or tip down. But anyway, uh, I do prefer the grip style of this knife, but the plain edge as well as the, um, uh, bearing pivot gives this one the upper hand to me. All right. So even though this feels great, this really does like feel nice in the hand. Both of these are pretty ergonomic. I feel like that one's just a little bit more ergonomic. But they're fine. They fill the hand out just fine here. No hot spots or anything. Uh, no issues with rubbing or anything like that. Uh, and I do love this grip texture, but this is definitely smoother. And I know a lot more people want that plain edge compared to the serrations. All right. So this is the clear winner. This was the total loser. And this was a, I would still enjoy it for under 10 bucks. So that's my opinion on these Harbor Freight knives. 
Let me know down in the comment section if you happen to pick these up when you saw my first video or if you happen to pick them up randomly, what you think of yours. You know, how often do you carry it? Do you get a lot of use out of it? Have you had any problems? Again, an issue with the, the much cheaper stuff out there, whether it's a flashlight, a knife, any, any type of gear, is the inconsistencies. When you're buying $400 knives, you could buy 10 of the same knife and they're probably all gonna be identical. They're all gonna be consistent. They're all gonna lock up the same. They're all gonna perform the same. But when you're buying, you know, six, seven, eight dollar knives, you could buy 10 of them and two of them are awesome. And, you know, and the other eight are garbage. They don't lock up right or there's play or there's issues or there's a sharp edge or the, or the actual edge is not sharp or whatever, you know what I'm saying? There's that inconsistency. That's what you're getting for the mass produced, you know, who knows how many of these uh, knives were made. I don't know how many Harbor Freight locations there are, but you know, there could be 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, a million of these. I have no idea, but they're, they're pumped out left and right. And that's why the prices are what they are. You know, there's always gonna be a give and take with an expensive knife versus a really cheap knife, all right? But it's a sharp piece of metal. And if you wanna zip open your Amazon boxes or cut a string off your shirt occasionally, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These very mediocre daily cutting tasks, if you're not using it for work, these are totally fine. And I can almost guarantee there's people out there who don't really care about knives. There's, there's hundreds and thousands of you know construction workers and plumbers and electricians and tradesmen mechanics you know all kinds of people that buy cheap knives and they use them and they're fine you know there could be a guy who's been using one of these for you know two three years now and it's like man i love this and i've got this from harbor freight this is a fantastic knife and that's cool if you think it's a fantastic knife that's all that matters it doesn't matter what the knife community thinks it doesn't matter what some collector with three hundred thousand dollars you know worth of custom knives thinks of your Harbor Freight pocket knife. If it's working for you, A-OK -okay with me. And that's why I love all types of knives. Expensive ones, cheap ones, unique ones, you know, boring ones. Sometimes the best knives out there are the most boring, you know, and that's just that's just how it goes. But anyway, uh, that's enough of my, my knife ramble. Um, I like these. I really do like these. Uh, push comes to shove. I prefer this one, but this one's totally fine. I really do dig that, that texturing on the scales. It just feels... Like it's really sturdy. If you're working with, um, you know, uh, oils and stuff, again, car mechanic uh, or other trades where you might have greasy hands uh, and oily hands, the, the grip does make a difference. You know, this knife might actually slip out of your hand or be uncomfortable or, or be sliding around if you do have like really dirty, grimy hands while you're using it. Uh, so the grip does help. However, this is not like, it's lacking grip compared to this but it definitely has more grip than this, if that makes sense. You know, it's not actually super smooth. There is some grip there. There is jimping on, on both of these knives, okay? Uh, as if you notice, and I actually only noticed this just now as I lifted these up, is there's a little bit of jimping on the base of the, uh, the spine there on the serrated one or the, or the partially serrated one, and this one is smooth on the back. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't, I didn't notice that before. But when I'm using a knife, nine out of 10 times, I'm using a natural grip, you know, where I have my thumb like way up here or something, you know, or I have my pointer finger like this, I'm zipping through a box or something. So, you know, I'm not always putting my thumb on the back there, but I do feel the jimping from the frame. So it's almost like, let me see, let me kind of turn my head. I'm looking off to the left here. This feels like it's jimped, right? And I try this one and this feels like it's, there's jimping too. It just feels like it's maybe a little longer. Now that I know, subconsciously, I might not realize that using it, but now that I know there's more, obviously as I go further and I'm off the handle onto the blade, I still feel it. But anyway, so this one's the extra grippy with the extra jimping, <laughs> but this one's the extra smooth with the plain edge blade. So pick your, uh, your favorite and uh, see what you think of it. Uh, but yeah, those are my opinions on these Harbor Freight Foley knives. There was another one there, I, met, I think I mentioned it in the first video. I didn't have any interest in it because it was kind of hokey. It had, you know, like the cutout, you know, like I like, I like SOG and I like like the Flash series and there's a bunch of their models that have cutouts here, but I just don't use those for strap cutters and stuff. I just don't, I don't use it very much. So that one just looked like extra tactical to me and I, I didn't even bother with it. But if you happen to get one of those things and you think it's a fantastic knife, post it in the comments so other people could see it. They might be interested. It, it's really different strokes for different folks. I picked these three folders because these are the most like, you know, generic knives that more people would like when you get into the tactical thing or a very specific rescue looking design that that's a more i would say like a, a smaller group of people who would want something like that you know what i mean for whatever reason whether they think it's just cool looking or they think they're going to use those extra features whatever it is like that one might have like a glass breaker on or something 
which is great. Who knows? Maybe it saves your life one day. Maybe you're in a car accident or something and a bunch of fuel leaking and you got to get out, right? But good thing you had your Harbor Freight tactical knife. Now you busted the window and use the strap cutter and you're safe. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.